Friends, welcome back to Bloomo Home and Garden, and today we are talking once again about the garden. Today we're talking about soil testing. Now you can see our garden is all tilled up. The soil is really soft and fluffy, and it's ready to plant. Or is it? There are a couple important steps before we start thinking about actually putting our plants in the soil. Just by looking at the soil, we can't tell what's in here and if it will be beneficial for the plants that we want to plant. That is why soil testing is so important. Just like we need nutrients and vitamins and carbohydrates to be strong and healthy, our plants need certain vitamins and minerals as well that are typically found in the soil. However, this garden has been planted several times and the plants that were here before took out certain nutrients and I need to know what is existing in the soil before I put new plants in. So soil testing measures those important minerals and substances that are nutrients for our plants that our plants need to grow and thrive and eventually produce the produce that we're looking for in our garden. Some plants do not like soil that is high in acids. Most vegetables do not. So if our pH is not correct, our plants are not gonna thrive. So soil testing is kind of like a little money in the bank, a little assurance to tell us what is gonna happen to our plants once they go in the soil. Part two of that is amending the soil before the plants go in. Now once we test our soil and we get the results and we know what's in here, and what is lacking, then we can add those things that are needed. That is called amending or fixing and making the soil proper for the plants that we wanna put in here. Now there are several tests that you can do to test your soil. They can be as simple as a one test just to test the pH. You could go deeper with nitrogen and potash and several others. Another thing that you can do is take some soil samples and send them into your cooperative extension office or other agricultural lab. That also has a fee, but they give you a complex rundown of exactly what's in your soil. That also takes some time. So for me, the best way to test my soil is by using an at-home test. Now the one that I have selected is easy to get from Amazon and I will link it down below. Let me show you what that test is like. I am using this Lester Leaf Rapid Soil Test Kit. It measures its pH, potash, phosphorus, and the nitrogen content. It's a very simple test. We're just gonna collect some soil and then we're gonna add some water into each of these tubes and add a little powder from the capsules and it will show up in these ranges and show us where we are on the scale from too much to not enough. Help us decide what we need to add or subtract from our soil. So to gather the soil for our soil test, we're gonna to wanna to go down a few inches. We're gonna to wanna to get the soil where the roots of our plants are going to be once they're established. That's where they're gonna be sucking up the nutrients. We really don't wanna get anything on the top of the soil because nothing really grows on the top. We also wanna get our samples from several different areas in the garden so we have an overall view, not just one spot. We're going to need the soil we collected, a couple of quart jars. Now I'm doing three separate tests. I'm going to do the test of what the soil is made of. I'm going to test our garden soil and I'm also going to test the compost that I want to add into the soil later. So I'm going to do three tests, but for each test you only need one jar. You are going to need some water measuring devices as well. And I'm just using this purified drinking water. You want to be sure that the water is purified and not well water because that's going to alter your testing. So purified water. I have some notes here, labels that I'm going to use. And then of course I have something to jot down my test results. Of course, you're going to need your soil test kit.
Now that I have my half cup in my nutrient testing jars, I'm using a totally different jar for the soil test. It even has a smaller ring around the top so I can tell it apart should my label get knocked off or something. I wanna be able to tell that it's distinctly different because this is the soil type test, not the soil nutrient test. We're adding in our two and a half cups of distilled water for our nutrient testing test. And now for the soil type testing, the soil was halfway up the jar and then we add water until it's three quarters full. So the entire contents brings the jar to three quarter full. So it's not three quarter cups of water. It will depend on your soil, if your soil is heavy or if your soil is light, how much water you're going to add here, but you're just gonna add until the jar is three quarters full. And don't forget to add your teaspoon of liquid dish detergent to your soil type test jar only. Not the nutrient jar, just the soil test. Give everything a good shake. You really want to mix it up, get everything stirred in really, really well. This is going to help us get the best results. So give it a good shake and then you want to set it down and not disturb it again. Once you have your jars filled, you want to place them back away where they're not going to get disturbed again. And I realized that I also wanted to test for the raised bed garden and I didn't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get that one ready and I will meet you back in 24 hours. But first we're going to go over our little test kit and I want to share um, just what's in it and to let you know that I will be sharing the review after using this product. This is the first time I have used this product. So we're opening up and the first thing I like is that is it. That's just how easy you just pull that back card up. No cutting, no getting stabbed or cut on sharp blister packaging that you can't open. When you have arthritis, that is a huge plus for me. So I like it. This card you wanna hang on to, it looks like just a piece of cardboard, but inside they have given you all kinds of valuable information, information on what the tests are, how to test, what's beneficial, and all those things that are gonna work into the success of using the test. And they also give you all the information about determining what to do after your test results. So I thought that was a load of great information, especially if you're just starting out or you need a refresher. This comes with an eyedropper, of course, the capsules you see me unpack, and it comes with the four testing vials. And these were a good quality plastic, and they were large print, easy to read, so this was a plus for me also. By the way, guys, zero sponsorship for this review. This was just one I picked up off of Amazon. I wanted to try it, but if I'm going to try it, I wanna give you the information too. So I like that the capsules are color coded and you cannot mix up which one goes in which container. The fronts are easy to read and of course the lid is color coded to the little plastic information on the front, the range, and the capsules are color coded to that. And you get lots of capsules so that you can repeat the test more than once. So that is all a plus, love that. As you can see, everything is clear and organized and easy to use. They also send you this little piece of paper that has a ton of information. So for flowers, plants, shrubs, trees, everything that you can think of, they have it categorized and the pH level that they are most healthy at. And there's also an order form to order more supplies. So this is not a one and done test, guys. This morning, everything has set overnight and we have some interesting findings. Let's look and see what kind of soil we have. 
and I'm really nervous about the outcomes. I really want to know what is in the soil. So it'll be interesting to know what I'm going to need to do to make my soil ready for my. Well, here is my soil type jar. And as you can see, it did separate. And what does that separation mean? What kind of soil makeup do I have? What are the things combined that makes my soil what it is? We're gonna take a look. Now, according to the science behind this project, sand, which is the heaviest of all particles, is going to fall to the bottom. The middle layer, which is very hard to see, but it's right here. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. That would be the layer of silt. Clay will be the top layer. And if you're lucky, you'll have a lot of organic matter up here. And that's a good thing. That is very good to have a lot of organic matter. The combination that we're looking for is 40% sand, 40% silt, and 20% clay. As we examine my garden makeup, you can see my layer of sand is a high percentage, my layer of silt is not, and then we have this layer of clay, which is probably more than the 20% we want it to be. So obviously, my makeup is not that perfect 40-40-20 recipe that we are looking for. And I know that's true because we live in an area where the soil is very sandy, and sandy soil drains very rapidly. It's a blessing and a curse. Water does not stand, nor does it last for any length of time. And what happens is as that clay dries out, it forms a crust, and then the top of my soil is very hard. It often cracks open. And you know the recipe for making bricks is sand and clay and to bake it in the hot heat. So that's what I get. And I know we can make this better. I have some organic material. We can add more organic material into this by taking the things that I've added to the raised bed and that compost and adding it into my big garden soil. I believe that we can certainly make this work and get closer to that perfect 40, 40, 20 recipe. Here we have our three jars, and this is our raised bed soil. This is our regular garden soil, and this is the compost that I had delivered that I would like to add to this. Now, I think adding this to this, because we just looked at that garden makeup, it's really gonna help that middle layer that I'm lacking in. Now, these I didn't separate because I didn't do that kind of a test. I didn't add the soap and I didn't shake them. Um, other than just to mix them. So we don't know the makeup of how much sand and loam and, and everything. Well, we do this one because we that's the one we actually measured. But for the raised bed and the compost, I really didn't feel that that was important. The raised bed is all added soil. So I have bag soils that I've purchased. And then last year I added a lot of this and this year I filled my beds with this and I mixed it really well so that's why these two look alike because there is a lot of this in this and you can see though that there are other things in here because while this is real watery at the top this does have more heavy materials in it so let's get into the nutrition content and see what we have now I'm gonna start with the large garden soil first and we're gonna do the pH test first. The pH test is done a little differently. We're just gonna put soil in the container just to that little line. And I don't know if you can see them. Then there's another little fill line with water and we're gonna put in the tablet and it will tell us on the scale where our pH is for the large garden soil. Now there is a sweet spot, it is right in here, and that is where our vegetables like to be. So hopefully our pH is at that level. Let's take a minute to talk about pH and why we test it. What is pH? pH is a measurement of the acidity or the alkalinity of something. In this case, we're talking about our soil. It is measured on a scale of zero to 14, and seven is neutral. As the numbers go down, 
from seven, it is more acid. And if it goes up, it is more alkaline. And like I said, there is that sweet spot about six, 5.5, 6.5, somewhere in there. Now there are acid loving plants and fruits and there are some who like it more alkaline, but for our purposes, we want it kind of right there in the middle. Soil pH also influences soil dwelling microorganisms and organisms like earthworms that provide benefits for our plants and help our plants take up other nutrition. And you can see here that just in the few seconds that we're testing, we're kind of right in that slight acid 6.5 perfect spot. Now we're gonna move on and do our garden soil nutrient testing. And we're gonna test for the important nutrients found in the soil or should be found in the soil. And we're just gonna use the water that we've already mixed up yesterday and allowed to sit overnight. And we're actually gonna test all three soils, but right now we're gonna start with the large guard soil and we're gonna do our nitrogen, our potash, and our phosphorus. And I'm just gonna talk about why we do the test. You can see how I'm doing the test. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section. But we're just gonna get in and talk about the importance of these tests. Now nitrogen is needed in the greatest amounts. It's what feeds our plants. It is the first number on all fertilizers, both organic and synthetic. Not only is it the most needed, it's the most readily lost from the soil. As our plants are planted, they're taking up those vitamins and nutrients and they're using it up so it gets used up easily. And it's vital. It's a, the natural part in chlorophyll manufacture through photosynthesis. It stimulates leafy green growth and promotes that healthy plant and encourages seed and fruit development or produce as you know, tomatoes and peppers and all those things. So you can tell when you're deficient because you have overall leaf yellowing and very weak plants. And if your plants are weak, it limits the ability for them to take up phosphorus, which is another important part. Moving on to potash or potassium. They call it potassium or potash because Back in the day, they extracted it by putting ashes in a pot and squeezing them down and getting the nutrients out. Potassium or potash is one of those essential nutrients for all plant and animal life. It synthesizes plant sugars and it helps it uptake food. It protects the plants against extreme temperatures, fights stress, fights diseases, protects against wilting, strengthens those roots and the stems. It helps them use water efficiently so without it, magnesium stagnant or would cease to grow and it would be a crucial balance in the alkaline soils. So very important that we keep up with our potassium. Phosphorus is another important element. It's also included, it's that second number in all fertilizers and it helps plants uptake those other nutrients, building strong roots. And it's easy to see your deficiencies because your plants are small they may not produce any flowers. And because most things are grown for their blossoms, their blooms, their flowers, their produce, it's very important to replace that phosphorus. Okay, our time is up and our tests have settled. It is now time to determine the makeup in our plants. And we have the color along the left side is going to match with the ones along the right. And wherever that color is, that looks the most like the one on the other side, that is it. So it looks like our acid is just about perfect and our potash is in the sufficient range. It looks like we have plenty of phosphorus in this garden. So it looks like we have a lot of good nutrition going on. Now it's really important to document your findings because you think you might remember, but you won't. And I'm doing three different tests here, so I want to be sure to document them so I can come back later and know exactly what I need to do. I really like how well this kit cleans up because we're going to do another test. We're going to go ahead and wash everything and get it ready for the next test. These little plastic ID cards that are on the front, 
come right out. They're plastic, so they're not gonna get ruined when you wash it. When you're ready to dry it, just to make sure that it is really dry on the inside, you don't want any other residue, go ahead and use a Q-tip. Now we're gonna move on and we're going to test the soil from the compost and just see what kind of nutrients are in the compost that I've already added to the raised beds and that I want to add to the big garden. We're gonna go ahead and start with our pH. And again, with the pH test, you add a little bit of soil in the bottom, your distilled water, and you give it a good shake. Uh, of course, you add your little green tablet in there and that's gonna tell you your overall composure. If you have a swimming pool, you probably do these very similar tests to test your pH and other things that are in your swimming pool. So you may be used to these kind of tests or you may use them for something else. Next, we're going to test our acidity in the soil. And again, we want that sweet spot right around 6.5. And we're going to do the potash as well. And you can increase the potash in your soil by adding wood ashes to your fire. Now you want good wood ashes here. You don't wanna use treated lumber or anything that you've burnt like that. But if you have a fire pit at home and you burn and have fires or you have a fireplace or a wood burning stove, emptying your ashes in your garden is a great way to improve that overall potash and then till them in in the spring. So next we're testing our phosphorus. We're gonna give that a quick shake and we're gonna wait our 10 minutes and see what our results are. Well, it looks like we have a lot of alkaline in the soil, but it's not too acid. So I think it's gonna be okay. There is plenty of nitrogen. Now remember this is a compost, so it's gonna be higher in nitrogen and good fertilizer. So that is a plus. Now the potash here looks like we're kind of a little below adequate and the phosphorus is the same. It's kind of between adequate and uh, sufficient. So this is the makeup of the compost and adding that to the test results that we've already gotten in the big garden, I think I can safely add this without having to make any adjustments to anything. I think we're totally fine to add these and it won't affect our outcome. Uh, adding a little more nitrogen will be fine. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be great to add to the big garden. Now another wash, and now we're gonna test the raised bed. Now I'm really excited to get the results of the raised bed because like I said, I've controlled the soil. I have added really expensive organic soils and compost to this bed. So I know that it's had a lot of good things go into it. But because they are a small area, my raised beds are three foot by five foot and I plant them every year. Again, the soil is taken up with those things that we use the most. And, and so our plants have already used up a lot of those things, but I add in every year. So I think I should be really good. And so, like I said, I know things get used up. I've put a lot in and I have control of this way more than the great big garden. So I'm anxious to see where we are and if I should feed this year or what I should do to make sure that I'm getting great crops. And I usually do. My kitchen garden where the raised beds are usually provides great produce, healthy plants. Uh, it's a beautiful garden when it's in full bloom. So I think we should be just fine. I will have for you in the description box ways that you can amend your soil. If your pH is too high or too low, if you need more potash, if you need more nitrogen, I will give some good ideas down in the description box below. Now I'm ready and look, my soil is completely alkaline. My veggies are not gonna like that at all. I'm really glad I haven't planted yet. Nitrogen really low here, isn't it? Wow, I'm really surprised, I have to say, I'm really surprised. I thought that this would be really good. My pot ash is not too bad, and my phosphorus could use a little bit more. 
I'm very surprised, I have to say. This garden needs some work. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna give everything a really good wash. This stores back in this package really easily. Guys, I'm gonna give this a five-star review. I'm so happy to have this test. I loved everything about it. Thanks so much for coming along today and learning all about testing soil and learning the makeup and the nutrient value in your soil. I sure learned a lot today. Some things I wasn't surprised, but a couple things I was really surprised. So I learned the fix for the big garden and this particular makeup is to add that compost mixture in before I plant. It's going to really help this middle line, the silt, and really help keep moisture in my garden and not drain fast because it's sandy. And also it's not gonna change any of the nutrients but even though I used that same compost in my raised beds and added a good organic soil in there, I was really shocked to see how depleted most of the nutrients were in those raised beds. So now I have my work cut out for me. I'm going to up that nitrogen content of the raised beds and do a couple other little twists before I plant them. And I'm so glad I learned this because I'm planning, I'm planting in just a couple of days here so I'm really glad I learned this information I hope it inspired you to take that extra step and learn a little bit more about what is in your soil so that your garden will be a success your plants will go strong healthy roots and produce an abundance of fruit so thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse today guys and until next time be blessed and be safe and I'll see you soon